I think we can say without a doubt that this sale and this haul is the best that we've ever found. Welcome back guys. We're so excited you are here. Today is part two of our crazy estate sale video. If you guys are watching this and you haven't seen part one, make sure to go back and watch that video. We did a ton of digging at this time capsule estate sale and we're gonna do some today. And then after that, I'm gonna show you this massive haul that we have right beside me. Let's go. All right, guys, we are picking up where we left off in part one. I came across these old toys in this crafting room that was just filled to the brim. I'm looking around for anything. It's It was really actually hard to even find things because it was so jam-packed. This is my bag right here. It was filled, but I did come across this popcorn. And wait until you guys see all the crafting supplies that we got. We will show you everything in the haul. I was just like head high back there looking through all those women's day magazines this whole wall is covered in them they're mostly from the 70s but i'm gonna take one more look at those up there like a little older <sighs> janine one word how would you describe the sale uh packed packed with with s crafting stuff holiday it's like six words stuff <laughs> there were so many children's books here i was looking through every single one trying to find the ones that i wanted if i could i would have taken them all they were mostly children activity books they were so cute like this the covers everything about them now we're talking about if we have enough money for all of this <laughs> stuff that we had waiting for us downstairs i had to pull my wallet out and check Thing, and luckily we did we did because <laughs> she gave us a great price and i'm just looking at the box and the bag on the floor that we had we had stuff downstairs in a pile we went back downstairs and checked out this closet full of really cool board games guys there was so much in this place we wish we could like just stay here for a week and show you um i found these bubbles but they did have a barcode and at this point my eyes are moving faster than my hand i'm just looking all over at all these books it was unbelievable I'm looking for vintage cards too. So I'm looking for any envelopes. Um, I'm really after those Christmas cards and I was really hopeful that I was going to find them at this sale. But this room was amazing. And look at those old curtains. I just wanted to show you guys sort of the house itself as much as I could because it was a beautiful house. It was huge. And here, Laura, you pointed out this die cut for St. Patrick's Day. I had to bring it home with us and I'm gonna use it this year. It's really cute. I always make sure to look through drawers at estate sales. I find a lot of holiday stuff in dresser drawers, in bedrooms, in china cabinets, in living rooms. So I always check every single drawer that I ever come across. In this one in particular, I did find holiday, but it tended to be a little bit newer from the 80s, uh, maybe the 70s. So I, I left pretty much all this behind. But yeah, always check out a drawer at a estate sale. You never know what you'll find. Now meeting back up with Laura showing her that I found another thing of bump chenilles. Had to get those. Look at this. I found new old stock Christmas crafts. Had to get those. We're just showing, I'm just showing her like what I found, things that I really want to keep and get. And look at this shell girl. So cool. She was in a china cabinet, so she is not dusty. And look how cute this little planter is. Little sombrero puppy. And just like other little like crafts and things that I found and I thought was cool. This I think is a flower frog or something and it's filled with pennies so I got it just for that. I don't know how many dressers were in this house but this was probably like the 10th dresser that I opened <laughs> and guys I finally came across some cards some older cards. I didn't see any from the 50s or 60s but I came across this pack that said Christmas so I didn't even hesitate and I put it right into my bag to check for later. So I'm just looking through every card and then I spot this and i i was so excited guys can't wait to show you in the hall so i just made sure to look through the entire set of drawers make sure i didn't miss anything else and that there wasn't anything else spectacular hidden behind these cards this book was interesting i think it was maybe a penmanship book i'm not too sure but i flipped through it just to take a look and you know i don't worry i thoroughly checked every single card in that drawer this was an interesting room janine you got in here before i did I did. This was like, I don't know, maybe like a washroom or something, but it had like overflow of um, crafting items. 
including this Rudolph. I found him in the closet and he was in actually pretty decent condition. And I was just like, he's so big, but how could I leave him behind? You can't. There were a ton of ribbons in this back room. Like this woman loved her ribbons. She loved her crafting supplies. And look at all these magazines again, just in this closet. These that I found were a bit newer. So these were mainly from the 80s. So I didn't take any of them. But who knows what was hidden underneath those clothes. It was just incredible. Like these new old stock Kleenex dinner napkins. These were probably from like the 70s maybe. I mean, there was just so much to go through. It was such a time capsule. And, you know, honestly still can't believe it. At this point, we are getting tired. We're reaching like the three hour mark, but we still pressed on to see if there's any hidden gems in this back room. That little frog was cute. And this box, I was like, is there an aluminum Christmas tree in And here? I had already looked in there <laughs> and thought the same exact thing. <laughs> That's so funny. But again, there's a ton of crafting supplies. The stuff in this back room was a bit newer, but I saw this tote of ribbons and I looked for anything that was older because people like to display with old ribbons, even if they don't use them, they're great for display purposes. And then I spotted this little planter. It was likely a Lefton, uh, a Japan piece, and it's a little chick. I thought it was really cute for Easter, but it did have a crack in it, so I ended up leaving it behind. After finding those Christmas cards, I was like, is this a scrapbook? <laughs> so I pulled it out to make sure it wasn't a scrapbook filled with cards, but it ended up being a bunch of vintage sheet music, which is still pretty cool to look at, but not something I would pick up. In this display case is where I found the Shell Lady and look at all of these dolls. A lot of these are like souvenir dolls. You would get them on trips. And some of these, I believe, are old Avon perfume bottles. It looks like it. She kept her stuff in great condition. I go into another master bedroom. There, were, I, This might have even been a house with two apartments. Um, but I was in love with these shades, these vintage retro shades. And if I turned around, there was the closet and just clothes and another door. This house went on and on and on. It was like a maze at points. I turned around and saw this desk. It was covered in just tons of different things. Um, but I did notice that there were some stamps in here. So I took a look to see if there were any cards or, you know, more vintage holiday ephemera. There were these vintage Christmas cards, which I thought were really cute with Santa and Mrs. Claus. Um, I don't know why I didn't pick up the box. I just, my bag was so heavy. I came across this radio, which was on, so I turned it off, put it back into the pile. We spent three hours looking through the three floors of this incredible home and we, we were just blown away. We went in a second time and uh, got more than we needed. I mean, I don't know, it was a really good price. We paid five more dollars for Rudolph, including another box. Um, Oh my gosh, how many hours? We spent like three hours in there. We could have spent 10. We could have spent like a week. <laughs> I think a week in there. It was amazing. All right, guys, so hold on. We're going to show you what we got. A lot of stuff that we weren't able to capture on camera because we need to dig. I was on like my knees at one point. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to have a haul for you guys coming up right now. What you guys are about to see is the haul in its entirety. We spent only $55 on all of this amazing vintage treasures. We're gonna dive in and show you guys all of it. We're gonna talk you through what we found, how we found it. Most of this we found while we weren't filming. We were on our hands and knees, literally, yeah. digging for things. At times, literally looking under tables and stuff because things were just so packed and stored away in boxes and you didn't know what you were gonna find. We actually had the opportunity to speak to the woman who was running the estate sale and we learned that the homeowner is just downsizing. She is still alive but wanted to sell off some of her belongings and through her items we learned that she was quite the crafter. There is a lot of crafting materials here. We walked out with so much, probably about five boxes and two tote bags. So much. If we could have, we would have taken the whole home with us. <laughs> yeah, it was truly amazing. We wish that the sale was going for longer because we definitely would have gone back. So let's look a little bit closer at these little felt things that I found. I found this box 
in another box i peeked in and i saw that it was all of these little um these are like kits right yeah usually they are kits that people could just make the ornaments themselves really popular in the mid 60s to 70s really and 80s actually there's a lot oh, yeah, of I guess kits so. in the 80s and stuff these are most likely probably from the 70s i would say these do have a bit of collectability and resale value as of late I personally really like this kind of felt style. I think it's really cute, especially this angel. She's my favorite. She's so cute. We're not sure what we're going to um, keep versus pass along. So if we, we definitely will be selling some of this stuff because it's just way too amazing to keep just for ourselves and way too much just to keep for ourselves. So when we do sell that stuff, we will tell you here on YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you know when this stuff will be available. I wanna walk you guys through this giant box that I found. I was on my knees at this point in this small room, tons of crafting supplies, but I was blown away when I found all of these vintage bump chenille. It's so amazing. Pipe cleaners. So if you guys aren't familiar, these are essentially pipe cleaners. They are called, um, bump chenille because they have these little bumps within them i wish you guys could put your hand through the screen and feel they're so soft they are um but these were crafted with back in the 50s and the 60s and still today if you are in the vintage crafting community these are huge people make really amazing christmas and halloween reproduction looking type uh pipe cleaner figures with these materials so these are really sought after. They and they're great for, sorry to cut you off, Laura, okay. but they're great also for repairing vintage pieces. That's a great pieces. point. You yep. know, sometimes we find little Santas that are made out of these um, pipe cleaners mm -hmm. and they may be missing an arm, but having some of the actual vintage materials on hand, you can repair it with the actual material that it was used to make. And that's really exciting. I know they make like reproductions of these, but they're not quite the same. So I got a red, a black in its original box, um, a pink, which was so amazing to find. Janine actually found this orange. I found one. Yellow, this coral, white in bags, another bag of pinks. Green, I've never seen so much. Yellows, golds, just like, look at the size of this. Look at all of these bump chenilles. It's amazing. Like the size of the box. I mean, there's so much in there. It's, and they weren't in the box. They were like scattered in that like crafting room. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think I found a whole them. Continuing on, I was in this corner. I was on my knees. I was in this cabinet. I had boxes all around me. Nobody could get to me. And I found all those amaz amazing crafting things. Here is more of the crafting stuff I found in that room, including these really cool vintage sparkly pipe cleaners. Um, they do look different than things today. Look how thick that metal is in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have actually have some of these that are new and they're much more flimsy and stuff. Mm. It's hard to see on camera, but they are thicker and more um, durable material. And I don't know if you guys are on Instagram, but there are some amazing crafters. When I was in that room, I was I thought of Magpie Ethel. You guys should follow her if you can on Instagram. She loves using these um, old, what are these called, Janine? Uh, spools? Spools, wooden spools to make like these adorable figures out of. And so in that room, I turned into her name is actually Laura. I turned into Magpie Ethel <laughs> and I was like, she would definitely use these. Like people would love to use these. So, you know, this is something I wouldn't pick up for myself, but I was thinking, you know, so I mm -hmm. picked up all these different size spools. I picked up more like sh brand new chenille pipe cleaners in different sizes, like unused. Look at that. I also picked up some things like these are all vintage mm -hmm. little little trimmings yep. and gold and snowflakes. Look at this, snowflake spangle. How fun is that? So I picked up this whole box, um, this little red one. I was like, this has to be a Santa Claus, right? Like, <laughs> it was so exciting. I was, I was like on my knees. I was like, this is great. I actually filmed finding this and I think it is a mobile and I think she made this herself. I think mm. she maybe even crafted these herself. Um, it's got some like, other things on it it's really tangled up so i may i'm gonna try to see if i can you know fix it up if not these guys are just cute on their own she is such a cutie these are called cotton spuns because their heads are cotton actually this might be like a cardboard 
but you know it looks like a cotton spun head where this is made out of cotton these are made in japan typically from the 50s and 60s really sought after really cute these are turkeys obviously but they're new old stock they're made in hong kong they're really cute for thanksgiving i've never found like a whole bag of like little things like this mm -hmm. like in the original packaging but what i was really excited about was when i found this what is that, Janine? I'm guessing, I guess it's little Abe Lincoln. It's definitely little Lincoln. <laughs> little little uh, President's Day wonder here. These are really cool. Um, a lot of times you find these little like, they're like cake picks, cupcake mm -hmm. picks and stuff like that. You find them at antique malls mm -hmm. or something like in bags. Um, we found a few out of the bag at different estate sales. I don't think they were used. They were open, but I'm not sure if they were used. Um, this one I did find separately. Um, look at how cute he is. Oh my gosh. Um, these were made in Japan. They have a pretty good resale value too. They do. Especially a president, like, you know, it's a little bit rarer to find a Lincoln <laughs> rather than Santa. Yep. And to have a whole bag in great condition. And these are older than the typical picks that we would find. The picks mm. that we typically find are more plastic. And I did find a few of those. I found these really cute Easter picks. These are like really 70s where these are more 50s and 60s. So we typically find plastic ones. And plastic picks are still made today. Um, you can tell by looking at these that these are older just by the fact that they have a lot of detail. And if you look on the back, this bunny does say Hong Kong on the, oops, on the butt. Countries of origin for products, anything that's labeled Hong Kong is usually plastic and usually from the 70s. Yep, new old stock bags of deer for crafting. Little deers in the original packaging. A little elk for 59 cents little brown miniature deer and I mean, this is new old stock we found so many of them like five bags of deer look at him this is like you could do anything with him he could have been a cake topper he could be an ornament i mean this is just so cool to find originally 20 cents i didn't find a lot of old ribbon but i did find this and it reminded me of valentine's day i thought it was really cute packaging so i picked it up there are a lot of felt pieces from the 50s and 60s that are vintage. Usually you see something like this, like a little mitten with a Santa face on it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times there will be a Made in Japan sticker on it. This one doesn't, but they just have like a similar look, right? But I have never seen, like on the internet or ever, um, a Disney Mickey Mouse felt piece. That is so cool. This bow is about to fall off, but it could be glued back on. This is really cool. At first I thought it was maybe crafted by the woman maybe she made it she seemed very crafty um but then i flipped it over when we came home and look at this guys walt disney productions made in japan wow so this was a true like piece of merchandise put in a store to purchase which i think is so cool so different something like this can you know appeal to multiple different collectors you know if you mm -hmm. collect vintage disney if you're a vintage christmas collector if you're both um, it holds cards. That's the purpose of it. It has a little pocket in here where you can put Christmas cards or a candy cane. It is just really cool. It's so cute. And it's in great condition. How amazing. Yeah. I think this is so cool. I have to look up some comps and see if it even has ever, you know, been on eBay before from what I can find, but this is just so cool. Let's talk about some of these amazing napkins that we found. This, I believe Laura found. It's a classic Santa napkin, probably from, when do you think, the 60s? Early 70s, 60s, yeah. The barcode came out in the early to mid 70s, I believe, maybe 1974, so probably before then. So we found a couple packs of Halloween napkins. Laura, you found this one. I did, no, did I? Yeah. Oh. I almost lost it when I found did this. You? I was so excited. I have never found new old stock Halloween napkins that are this old. I love the graphic on this on these napkins. There's so much detail on them. Uh, this flying jack-o'-lantern with a candle in it. You have this ghost that has like chains that are hooked up. I mean, it's just so cool. I've never seen this napkin before. Me either. They're just so cool and 
made me so excited. Now I just can't say cool enough, but when I found, which I didn't pick up on camera, I found a pumpkin pail. There he is. That was the one in the listing, right? Absolutely could not leave that guy behind. He is so good and we'll get into him later. But underneath him, I found these amazing Halloween napkins. These wow. are vintage Halloween napkins, which have a really big collectability. People love them. They love to frame them and use them in all of their vintage Halloween displays. I personally also collect vintage Halloween napkins. Shouldn't be a surprise, obviously. <laughs> I love Halloween here. But I, they were just underneath the pumpkin wow. and I found, I believe there's four. It's just truly so cool. These predate the ones that we found here. Yep. These are most likely from the 50s. I mean, these could go from like, what, eight to $15? Each, yeah. Each. Okay. How sweet are these Valentine's Day napkins? These look to me like they are perfectly in the 60s mm -hmm. era. And these look like to me, the 70s, just by the illustration. If you guys watched part one, you saw me pick up a box of Denison seals. Maybe my favorite find from <laughs> the sale. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, look at this. Okay, this right here, these seals were what was in that box. I just saw stars and we do have stars. They're just not in this area right now. Um, there were star seals, but this was in all of that. And guys, when Janine and I pulled this out, of the we, pile. We, we literally screamed. We actually literally screamed. Like, Let me get closer. Screamed. If you guys don't know about these, these are um, seals. And they were made by brands such as Denison, Eureka, and they are like stickers sort of. You would, um, I guess you would lick them or wet them, the backs yeah. of them, and mm -hmm. they would seal onto letters or scrapbooks. Um, to find a Halloween one, unused i'm gonna do this carefully because they are they are falling out falling. but oh my god actually none of them have fallen out but they're about to so i'm gonna be careful for gift dressing party decorating entertainment of children well let me tell you this entertained us for a good yes, 20 minutes but 20 we minutes. might be children oh look at that that's so cool okay like this is amazing i think they're all the same i'm not gonna flip through it um made in usa this in itself is worth like 20 to 30 dollars i think it's one of those things where like i wouldn't spend 30 dollars on it but to find it at an estate sale yeah and people buy these seals individually that's true collect them use them it's so amazing to find them and then you found not just that holiday but valentine seals two denison valentine seals booklets for gifts, favors, place cards, and school use. These are all in there as well. Let me try to open this first page. How cute. Unused, guys. I lost it. I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. I didn't see these at the sale. I really didn't. So like three books. And, and then on top of that, look, look at all these that were inside of it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got a bunch of Valentine ones. So we've got the rose. To my love, another one. And like, they're great on their own, but to have them in the packaging, it's just so amazing. I love this one. You know, we go to a lot of a sales where we see ornaments and decor, but to find a lot of papery crafting holiday supplies is pretty rare. Yeah, we, we don't really come across it. And if we do, it's just a couple scraps. Mm -hmm. A few seals mm -hmm. at the bottom of a box. This was just so cool. And then there were some Eastery ones. This I thought was really cool. These foil. I don't know if you guys can make it out, but there are Easter bunnies in there and ducks, some bunnies, some really cute illustrated ducks and bunnies. Single duck in here. <laughs> this must have been in that same box. I didn't realize it until we got home. Look at all these, you know, there's a bunch of them stacked in there. Amazing. A little snowman. And look at this, guys. Oh, I love that one. So cool. Janine, you might have actually found this one. I, don't I know did if this find was in the this box. One. Yep. No, this was um this was in a completely different room. Look at that. A little angel. Uh, unopened. Speaking of seals, guys, I was after vintage greeting cards, vintage Christmas cards, vintage, vintage Valentine's Day cards. I'm like, they gotta be here. Everything else is here. Where are the cards? As you guys saw, I went through those drawers and I found these. 
incredible. I did find cards, just wait and see. But I found these. I, I, I would never think that I was gonna find these at an estate sale. No, these are things that we see online, on auction, um, on eBay, but we never find at sales. So it's so cool. And like, if you did the math, we got so much divided by 55. These were like, what, 20 cents each? They were like the original price. They were, and that makes me really happy. So these are also seals, but they're a little bit more elaborate, more fancy, because look at these Santa heads with real, you know, faux fur. Bearded Santa seals and whisker Santa seals. Unused. So cool. I found this really fun music box. It is Santa. I'm not gonna turn it on because when I did turn it on, I wound it so, so lightly and it just kept going. <laughs> I don't know for how long, um, but it does play and, oh man, I just noticed something would have been here. That's okay. That's okay, you can always put something there. Um, it's in pretty good condition overall besides that little missing. This was made in Taiwan. It was, look at that, originally $16.99. It's an all around pretty cute piece and I'm very happy to have found it. Third time's a charm? Yeah. I, I guess I can't believe I, you found this. I found this um, sugar and creamer, which we have found now three times. Uh, <laughs> the first time, an estate sale. Mm -hmm. Second time, Goodwill. Goodwill. And the third time, an estate sale. So I found this in what I'm pretty sure is the original box and I was hoping that the spoon would be there. Which um, is actually a shovel. Which is actually a shovel and that would have been so cool, but it's not there. So it, it has eluded us yet again. The mystery continues. The, the mystery does continue. I'm so happy to have found it. Is there a maker? No, no again, maker. no maker. Again. And no maker on the box either. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. His red paint, because of that cold painting we've talked about before, you can date some of ceramics by the fact that this red paint is chipping off. That means it was cold painted and it was most likely from the mid century. But his face is really delicately painted and really nicely painted. It's a shame that red is coming off, but that's just some age. He's mm -hmm. definitely salvageable. He's a great find. He's a rare find. He is, but I guess he's not rare to us. <laughs> not to he's us. Kind of, he's kind of like Frosty the Snowman, right? I'll be back on Christmas Day, like he comes yeah. back once a year. He yeah. comes back for us like once a year. <laughs> yeah. Like once a month. <laughs> once a month. So really cool to have found this. I found a few more ceramics, which was really exciting. This bunny, it actually has a maker's mark on the bottom. Oh yeah, look at that. Is that an Anarco? Anarco, Japan. It's so cute. I love the detail of those little delicately painted flowers. Or maybe that's a transfer. I'm not too sure about <laughs> my ceramics, but this bunny has such a cute, nice, pretty little face. A little bit of a cleanup needed, but I think that mm -hmm. stuff should come off, maybe with a magic eraser. Look great in an Easter display. I was so excited to have found this, especially since it was made in Japan. And a lot of the ceramics I saw were made in Taiwan. I believe this bunny was hand painted, and I think it is um, a Holland mold. Whoever painted this did a fabulous job. A great job. I think it's so cute. I love this bunny for the sheer fact that it is black and white. I don't see that for a lot of Easter bunnies. Um, I think it's just really darling, and I might have to keep this. Look at this. What's that? Uh, I think it's like people in the church. Okay, guys, going through a few other things. In that crafting room, I came across a bag of moss, and these little flowers were in there. I wasn't quite sure what they were, but these little chenille pipe cleaners stood out to me, and I was like, I gotta grab the bag. It ended up being like, oh my gosh, like 24 stems of these pretty amazing flowers. I'll show you guys one up close so you can get an idea. I don't know if she crafted these herself or if they were purchased like this, but these are probably from the 60s. They're pretty cool. I mean, look at the bunch over there. They're really pretty, and I think they'd be great for a spring or Easter display. I did find these two holiday spray cans, and this one is fake snow. I've never seen this design before. Yeah, the really blue. Cool. Very reminiscent of like a 1940s Christmas card. Mm. I don't know if it's that old, but definitely cool. Has a great resale value. Since it's rare, this could sell for like $20. And then I found this Santa Decorator Red Spray. I looked for the top everywhere and I couldn't find it, but I thought his face was too cute to leave behind. That's so interesting. It says enamel. I wonder what that was used for. Santa. I found these three angel ceramics, which are so different and unique. I've never seen them before. I love how they're all their own color. They are all marked Japan, but they do not have a maker. 
but I had to grab them. They're in great condition. Could definitely resell for, oof, I don't even know, 25, 30 plus dollars. Came across these girlies in great condition as well. Girly candles are a staple in a vintage Christmas collection. We have quite a few. These do have the original stamps on the bottom. Look at that, 10 cents. And there is some markings on these, but I have a great tip for you guys. All you need is like a pantyhose. And if you just like stretch it over your finger and rub lightly on any marks that might be on there, it tends to take it off without ruining the entire wax candle. So try that out if you wanna clean up some girly candles. And speaking of girly candles, I found this, which was original packaging to Halloween girly candles. That is so cool. I mean, the candles weren't in there, but the packaging itself is- I did find one Halloween Oh, girly. did you? Yep, right <gasps> there. Now he isn't in the best shape, see down there, he can't yeah. really stand up. Oh, he, he can. He can. So that's exciting. Did he come from this? Mm, maybe. Going through some of the Christmas stuff, I found these plastic deer, which are pretty cool. They are marked, made in Hong Kong. So these are from the 70s. They're in pretty good condition and have their bells, which are original to them. I couldn't leave those behind. And I also found, you guys saw this really cool centerpiece, which I wanna show you up close. This is cool, guys. This is something that I've never seen at a sale myself. I've seen it on eBay. I've seen it in people's collections. I don't have this piece myself, you know, prior to this. Um, but this is like a really old, probably 1950s uh, Christmas centerpiece. And it's made out of glass ornaments, which are these candles and tin foil leaves, which are made out of paper and a tin foil finish, a little bottle brush tree with some styrofoam and little glass ornaments, all on top of this handmade, you know, everything was handmade, right? This handmade stand. It is really cool. It's in pretty decent condition. I also grabbed this candlestick of a similar fashion, but it is broken at the top. The top would have also had this type of flame on mm -hmm. top, but I couldn't leave it behind. It is just so cool. I know somebody could craft with it or do something special with it. Yeah, you could have put one of those old bulbs on top of it from uh, you know, a string of lights even. Yep, that'd be really cool. Or you might even be able to take the candle off and use the base to create something entirely new. So these were two really unique really cool and vintage pieces that i was excited to find this is george harrison of the beatles in an inflatable form i've never seen this before this is so cool i had to go on ebay and look this up he sells for like 55 dollars. wow the whole set sells for close to 200 um he's holding his air pretty well he's just so cool i knew who, exactly who it was just by the hair i mean it's just iconic on the back, it is marked Hong Kong and 1966. Wow. So cool. And I saw you digging for the other Yeah, I tried to members. see if there was any of um, any more of the Beatles there. Not that I could find, but who knows, there could have been. It seems like the George Harrison inflatable is one of the more expensive of the inflatables of the Beatles. So I guess it was good that I found him. I found these little guys. I at first went and they were in a bag. They were in a plastic bag and I just grabbed the bag. I thought they were these satin balls, but turns out, do you guys see? They're little mice. They ended out being these little tiny mice on these picks with little candy canes and bow ties. How adorable. I have never really seen anything like this before. In the crafting room, I found these birthday um, plates. Also found in the crafting room, oh my God, look how many there are. New old stock cups. These are Easter cups and just look at that graphic, guys. Oh my gosh, I nearly, I lost it. I lost it when I saw these. I couldn't believe, I never come across new old stock, you know, Easter cups. I mean, that's adorable. These do have a resale value. You can sell them individually, but I just, I just think they're so cute. I'm definitely gonna have to hold on to some. I found this Smile popcorn. Just the the purple was sticking out from a bunch of boxes. It's up against a wall. I thought it was Easter, but it ended up being this really cool popcorn. I know there's a love version and these can resell for like $25 plus. An incredible find. How fun. I found these adorable made in Japan, Mr. and Mrs. Claus 
picks. They're so cute. I love them more. You love them. I like snatched so them out of your hands. <laughs> These two little styrofoam snowmen I saw and I knew Laura needed to have them in her <laughs> life. This little guy needs a repair, but this is um, a snowman knee hugger. He's missing his arms, but with all this uh, bump chenille, I'm sure I could craft him some arms. This is really rare. If you could find this in good condition, guys, it can go for like $50. Wow, he is so cool. This is different, Janine. Um, mm -hmm. Why'd you pick her up? I picked her up because people really like these little shell girls. They are handcrafted. They were um, usually souvenir pieces by beaches. Um, a lot come from Hawaii and stuff. This one is in pretty good condition. She's pretty big. She's really big. She's like eight inches tall and she has beautiful color to her. She was kept in a cabinet, um, like a display cabinet. So she is in really great condition. There's like no dust and um, she is something that I will be selling and passing on to someone who collects them. Continuing on, I found these adorable. I mean, I am obsessed with these. I, I, I can't believe I found these. I, I've never seen these before. I didn't know I was obsessed with them until I saw them. But the moment I locked eyes with them, <laughs> we fell in love. These little deer. They're so cute. They are made in Japan. They have little felt bodies, little stamped on eyes. They are the cutest things. I am not selling these. I am definitely keeping them in the collection because they are just too cute. I love them. Look at their little necks. <laughs> these are probably from the 60s and these probably would resell for a good amount of money, but I think I have to keep them. Found some of these metal scotch gift tapes. Oh, these are so cool. These are also really collectible and can resell for like $10 each. Just amazing. I think you should talk about your matches. Fine. Okay, let's talk about the matches. So I wasn't filming this. I was looking through some stuff and I came across first these right here. Top 10 find of today for sure. Um, these, I was like, what is this? It's definitely a candle, obviously, but I opened it up and there are matches inside. Look amazing. at all these matches. These are so cool. I had never come across anything like these before. They just have amazing graphics and details. And these were probably, you know, given out at businesses or different locations as like a promotional item. They were actually in a bag full of stuff, stuff that looked like this, and I didn't know what they were. It was actually close to like a bunch of sewing stuff, so I actually thought they were sewing materials or things for sewing, but I was wrong. This whole bag was filled with vintage matches, and these are so cool. They are meant to look like little beer cans, red cap ale. You open it up and look at all those matches. So this is probably a promotional item for the company. Maybe How give cool. it out of bars even. That's true too, yeah, probably. So cool, so there's these. This one was really fun, this purple one. I love that purple one. And the matches are purple and the name of the liquor store is around the top of the tube. Just so cool. Why don't they make things like this today? <laughs> I love it. I came across what else? These. I have like eight more of these. These are new old stock. Never used. Bucket of chicken. The world's best fried chicken. Kitchen post. We catered a party. So this must have been for a um, restaurant. Then in the same bag, I came across a bunch of matchbooks. These are really cool. Got this beautiful graphic on the outside and then little matches inside with different graphics. Um, and then I came across this pile. I looked at this one first. I was like, this is pretty. And then, then I was like, this can't be what I think it is. Is this going to be what I think it is? And I opened it up and oh, it was wow. this. This is so cool. This excites me so much. So these are matches and it you know it has a print on it it has a design on it and these are definitely really rare very collectible i think this might have been a sample it says your imprint here so i think mm -hmm. this was a sample uh if you wanted to order these for your business you know you might get this just to say oh i am obsessed look how cool that's so amazing so nice we got this pile and i was like this looks pretty similar to this so right we started opening them and look at this guys these i are love so it so cool season's greetings we opened it up and it was a really so nice pretty. holly berry design these are so cool very collectible pretty valuable for what they are in part one of our adventure you guys saw me see their little feet sticking out i thought they were just like scarecrows from the dollar store but that's I got, what they look like well they looked like that until i got a glimpse of these little plastic faces and I immediately knew that these were something really special. And then I turned it over. I didn't capture it on camera, but look at that, guys. 
that is a made in Japan sticker. Wow. And these same exact stickers and seals went on vintage Christmas knee huggers. So I would equate these to something like that. These are similar to a knee hugger, probably manufactured by the same manufacturers who made knee huggers back in the day. But these are Halloween little scarecrows, little plastic faces, felt bodies. So cool. Brand new looking. So Amazing. cool. So rare. I've never seen these before. If you guys are Halloween, you know, fans, drop a comment if you've ever seen these before. Um, I think they're really rare. I think they're really special. And I can't believe there were two of them too. Amazing. I was losing my head over these. <laughs> these were just like in that crafting room, which wasn't really a crafting room, just had a lot of the crafting stuff in it. These were all over the floor. And I think the first thing I saw were these. Amazing. Oh my gosh. There are four of these amazing plastic witch heads which 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 are i think pretty rare i've never seen them you know these were originally made as a crafting material for people to make their own witch dolls out of oh my gosh they're they're just so cool i'm sure they have a great resale value i found these as well as a santa face amazing this is like a santa face that i've seen on santa dolls mm -hmm. so they must have made the santa dolls but they must have also made just heads for people to craft with Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. And then lastly, I picked up this guy. I recognized him as a little bear face. So cute. Really cute. There are a few other faces on the floor. I wish in hindsight we'd pick them all up. I know. We didn't know the prices. We we I was lugging around a, a sack full of stuff like Santa. I weighed a ton. Um, so these are the ones I picked up. These were definitely the best ones there. They're so cool. I found these cool tile samples. Um, I picked up these two colors because I thought they were the coolest. Some of the other ones were just like plain beige. I don't know if you can see, there it is. Bonnie Maid is the company, or I think it's Bonnie, Bonnie Maid. How cool is that? So in our future home, our entire kitchen <laughs> counters are gonna be covered in this, right? <laughs> I think I want the pink. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the search for vintage greeting cards, Christmas, Valentine's, Easter. I've been looking for a while. I was like, they've gotta be somewhere in this house. Like I know it. Um, and you guys, I think I filmed picking up a, a bunch of what was labeled as Christmas cards. No idea what was in there until I took it home. I couldn't believe it. I'm obsessed. Wow. Look at that. Santa, is he in a train or a truck? He's driving a truck. A bus, a bus, a bus. full of reindeer. Wow. I love this. I'm obsessed. I'm so happy. This is like a holy grail Christmas card for me. I've seen this one before and I've always wanted it. Um, but there are some other really cool ones that I came across. You know, classic cards from the mid-century. Like that. This adorable snowman. So cute. Gingerbread house. And these are really collectible guys. If you have ones with good graphics like this that people are after, they can resell for five, give or take dollars. You know, if you have a really amazing one like that Santa in the bus, that could resell for $15 in itself. I was just so excited to have finally found some cards. I oh, love the graphics. so nice. Look at this amazing box of books. Not just books, but some amazing little party favors. I found this, I thought this was really cute. It has like the cutest little elephant, I think. Yep. Laura, you found some amazing party favors. Yeah, they were, you know, in the original packaging. They're not all in there, but just really cool to have seen, you know. These clickers are just so cool. Carousel party favors, love it. And then these harmonicas are definitely new old stock, never opened before. I just How cute. I had to grab it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> it's Probably. so adorable. I pass it on but this this you absolutely love i mean come <laughs> on this is so kitschy this is so collectible this i just know would resell for a nice penny but i'm just more excited to see it in the original packaging and to see that cute little face these books are mainly books that i found i really went in on trying to find some of the coolest books because we don't really find the the condition of of these um 
in any old estate sale. So the condition was so good. I'll show you some of my favorite finds. Unfortunately, this one is in pretty poor condition. As I just said, everything else is in great <laughs> condition. But I've never seen this. Um, it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown like animation, you know, book mm -hmm. illustrated like this. And I thought so. I thought that was really cool. And I found some Halloween books, you know, books that have great graphics for display for Halloween, stuff about witches and all different cool stuff like this. The Witch Family. Look at that cover. That is so cool. No Dude. such thing as a witch. How to care for your monster. And then there's just some really cool books like Deputy Dog and the Spaceman. And these are old guys. Like we were looking at the mm -hmm. dates inside. Like that one right there, Bunny Tales, is from like the 50s. I thought this Flintstones at the Circus book was so cool. I've never seen a um, Flintstones book before. So I thought that was so awesome. This is from... 1963 it's just really cool and in fabulous condition that Here's one's really cool a really cool book for um halloween to display vampires werewolves and other demons look at that cover it is so cool five fat piggies the hound dog i found this one i think this is a coloring book in the shape of a stocking which is really exciting and coloring books can resell you know, it's really for the graphics on the front mm -hmm. and the illustrations. And for me, I just really love the graphics of these. Laura. Oh, yeah, I might have slipped that of, into the box. Speaking of graphics, look at that. This is a craft magazine. And, you know, you can still use these today yeah. to craft. And so cool to see it. Jack and Jill. I love coming across Jack and Jill books. I'm so glad you found some. Yeah, this one's from 1970. This one's from 1971, and they're both um, holiday ones. I love this cover, I think it's so cute. Some coloring books that I just could not leave behind. This one I just thought had such a cute look. The little cat on the pillow is adorable. Santa's Missing Reindeer, I thought this was a coloring book at first, but it's actually an illustrated story. I thought this coloring book was so cute. This bear is adorable. I had to get it. It has a very 1950s look. This was probably like the best book that I found. This is copyright of 1961 and it's a night before Christmas book. 1961 and look at the condition it is in. It has beautiful illustrations. The colors are still vibrant. The corners of the pages aren't yellowed or cracking. It is in great condition. And I love this. Just look at that. That is amazing. These um, large Night Before Christmas books were pretty popular from the 40s through the 60s and very collectible, especially one like this in such great condition. This is a great find, Janine. Thank you. As you guys saw in part one, I picked up a stack of magazines and crafting books. I wasn't planning on getting these all, but they ended up in the bag and we ended up getting a fantastic price. So they all came home with me. We're actually thinking of doing an Instagram live and going through some of these magazines with you guys to just show you, you know, some of the crafts and advertisements in them. They are just incredible and just so fun to look at. So if you guys are interested in flipping through these with us on Instagram live and just seeing what's in them, let us know in the comments. Um, and maybe we'll do that in the upcoming weeks. So I found all these magazines, but then I was really excited to find this. It's so nice. Oh my gosh. This is a produce magazine from 1972. Wow. I would have thought a little bit earlier just by the graphics, but this is just so cool guys and has some great colors. Like, look at that. That's so pretty. It's so fun. It is so cool. People would love to like display this or even cut out pages and put them in frames. I don't think I can cut this one up since it's like in such good condition. I might have to hold on to it for a little bit. I've just never come across something like this. Even at an antique mall, I think it's pretty rare to find because this was just like a magazine, you know? If you didn't buy anything, you would just toss it usually. Although this woman, she kept all her magazines, mm -hmm. every single one, there are hundreds, so. Um, I'm really excited about this find. So guys, I think that completes, we, we covered nearly everything <laughs> we got at this sale. 
We really hope you enjoyed coming along through the estate sale with us and seeing everything that this home had. It was quite a time capsule. Again, we're not quite sure what we're keeping versus selling yet, but if you are interested, make sure you are following us and subscribed here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and follow us over on Instagram too, because these two places are where we announce all of our sales. Um, so yeah, oh, did I, did I talk about Rudolph? I don't think you did. I don't think I did, but um, we went back in for a second time, as you guys saw, and we got this and a bunch of other stuff for $5, so he was like 25 cents. And he's huge. He's huge. <laughs> I almost didn't get him, but I know um, people would have killed me if I didn't, so I, I had to get him, so he's in good condition, too. So thanks for joining us, guys. See you next time. Bye! Bye.